So in this video, we're going to take a look at beat keeping and strumming. Not bee keeping and humming, beat keeping and strumming. Try and improve or develop your timing skills. Uh, many people naturally lock onto a pulse fan in music without thinking. And consider it a party. Majority of dancers are doing the um, the one, two, three, four dances, I call it, where the feet are going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. At the very basic, they're holding the beat and they're probably doing it subconsciously, i.e. they're doing it without thinking and everyone's in synchronized synchronicity with the music. This is quite a bit easier if it's like a real strong music, hence um, dance music, which might have like a heavy thumping beat. It's quite easy to lock on to then. Even for non-musicians, you know, you think probably people at, most people at the party, they're probably not musicians. So we're going to apply the same thing to instruments uh, and playing in time, so we're going to look at today. So many people can do it subconsciously without thinking, it just happens, and that's great. That's what we want to be aiming to do. Whereas some people do struggle with the concept and, uh, and are unable to do it. Um, others might think they've got the skill, but are uh, oblivious to the fact they cannot keep time. And it's only painful to the, to the listeners of that that they're, they kind of appreciate that they're not in time. But sometimes we can't see there are of our own ways, can we? So let's start by imagining the clock ticking, which ticks one tick for every second, um, therefore 60 ticks per minute. If you watch the second hand or watch the digital display on a, a clock or a watch, you should be able to count the numbers ticking at a steady rate. As you watch them, you count them through. One, two, three, four, and so on. It's a regular interval. It's every second, isn't it? You know that. Okay, now let's do the same kind of thing. Uh, we're not going to look at a clock, though. We're going to listen to the ticking. For this video, I've made our clock a little bit faster. It's going to be running at 90 ticks per minute, which in musical terms is the tempo referred to as 90 beats per minute. So let's just take a listen to that. Okay, again, it's just a little faster than one per second, but it's regular. Hopefully we can anticipate when the next one's coming because it's the same distance away from the previous one. Let's tap along. You don't need an instrument at this point. We could probably clap your hands or tap your leg and just try and keep your tapping. Imagine you're the clock, tap along with the clock. Clap your hands if you want. We're keeping in time with that click. Snap your fingers if you can. And so on. Okay, there's some people there they might drift on there. If there's a slight drift, we need to kind of be aware of that and compensate. And it's those people that don't aware, they're not aware they're drifting. They're the ones that probably need to um, have some assistance from a tutor. So um, bear that in mind and, and seek assistance where you need to. Okay, let's try it again, but let's make it a bit more fun. Let's strum along with a chord. Same kind of thing, instead of tapping your leg, your guitar, or you're clicking your fingers, we're gonna strum along. I'm going to choose my favourite chord, which is G, and I know a lot of you out there know G. If you don't know your G chord, you should learn it, uh, ask your teacher for that, and um, that'd be a great one to add to your collection. So for a start, let's just take a listen to the clicking, the ticking, same tempo, 90 beats per minute, 90 ticks per minute, and now we're going to lock onto that, instead of tapping our guitar. We're going to be the clock by strumming our guitar in times with the ticks. And so on. Many people find that easy. Some people at this point will probably need some assistance. So in which case, you know, speak to the teacher. You need to, um, they'll probably give you some guidance on how you can improve this. Maybe try a different tempo that suits yourself. Okay, let's do it again. But this time we're going to count along in groups of four fours. The reason being, the majority of music you'll encounter will be in what's known as 4-4 four, four time. And without getting too heavy on the theory, that's essentially four beats per bar. And we're counting groups of fours. So again, let's listen to our music, uh, our ticking. And you'll notice there's a slightly different ticking sound every fourth beat. It's the first of the four. If you listen. 
Okay, so that's going to mark out, that odd one is going to mark out our beat one. So listen, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and so on. Now hopefully you can keep the one, two, three, four count going without having to say it out loud. You can probably just count it in your head. Let's go back to playing the guitar again and think one, two, three, four. In fact, let's, let's um, accent that beat one with a slightly stronger strum. So it's going to be one, two, three. I'm not just exaggerating for the purpose of the video here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, we'll do it with the music uh, with the tick. I'll count you in. So after four, ready? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Now carry on without me counting. Two, three, four. And so on. Hopefully you can count to four. If you can't count to four, you probably want to be um, doing further lessons outside of this music session. Okay, now we're counting groups of fours. Um, four, four being the most common time signature in music, uh, sometimes known as common time. You'll see it at the start of a piece of music, it looks like a fraction, four over four. Again, I don't want to go too heavy into theory, that's um, a subject for another video. If you do notice yourself getting ahead or behind the beats, you need to make minuscule adjustments to try and compensate. Again, going back to when we was watching the clock ticking, you can anticipate when the next tick, the next pulse is gonna come up, so you can predict when it's gonna happen. It's not like out of the blue, it's not a random occurrence. It's like saying, you know, uh, every year I get a birthday. Every week there's a Saturday, you know exactly when it's gonna come, you know exactly when it's gonna happen, you know. Every day there's a, um, you know, when the big hand goes to the L, you know exactly when it's coming, you can see the speed it's coming and you can anticipate it. So the same thing happens with the music. Again, I would, at this point, if you're a little unsure, or even if you are sure, um, if you're kind of new to, and you haven't done much playing with accompaniment, get somebody to sit with you, a teacher, they will guide you further and assess how good your, your time cue it is. Let's try that one more time. So um, in fact, this time, I'm gonna put a bass drum beat on those, uh, on those four pulses, so we're getting a bit, bit, bit more music like. So after four, let's do our G chord again. One, two, three, four, ready? One, two, three, four. Keep it going, I'm gonna stop, but I want you to keep going. One, two, three, Concentrate on that beat, and hopefully you're playing one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, and so on. Again, if you're struggling at this point, you probably need assistance from um, a tutor to guide you a little bit further and who can help and supplement this video. Okay, so playing on the beat on that pulse, on that click, is sometimes musically known as being tight. So um, you can have your uh, probably teacher assess, see how tight you are musically. And if you bang on the beat, you're a tight player. The opposite of tight is gonna be loose if you're a little bit sloppy or a bit behind the beat, which isn't um, sometimes a bad thing. It can be used to musical effect. But generally, we try and aim for the beat. That's, that's what we're looking at today. All right. Now, we're going to um, put in another drum beat, which is going to mark out beat two and four. And quite often in, in uh, traditional music, modern contemporary music, uh, you'll find the snare drum playing the two and the four. So let's listen to it for a start. And we've got a clear marker there where our beat two and four is. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, now the snares are pairing on um, what's sometimes known as the upbeat. Um, therefore, the bass drum between is known as the downbeat. And this comes from, if you think of an orchestra where the conductor's conducting up and down, it kind of speaks for itself. Down, up, down, up. One, two, three, four, and so on. 
Okay, even without a conductor, we can still think of those um, you know, alternate beats. Let's try it again. We're going to strum our chord again on the beat, counting one, two, three, fours in their hands, and listen to the two and the four, how they, you know, there's that snare drum accent. So after four, ready, one, two, three, four. Keep it going. One, two, three, four, and stop. Now, hopefully, you held that together. Again, if you're struggling at this point, this is where you, um, you know some support from a teacher will get you on track and um, help where, which is beyond the scope of this video. Now, from this day onwards, every time you hear a piece of music. I want you to try and find that pulse. Usually found by locking onto what the drummer's doing and counting your head, one, two, three, four. Some of you may just end up kind of rocking your head or even tapping your foot. Naturally, you just kind of lock onto that rhythm without even thinking about it. That's great, that's a great place to be. If not, try and encourage yourself to do that. Without your instrument in your hand, you can just one, two, three, four, lock onto those beats. If you do fancy making it a bit more exciting, you could put your chord changes in there. One of the hardest things about playing guitar certainly is, is change from chord shape to chord shape. Um, that's a subject for another, another lesson. Again, your teacher could supplement this uh, and look at that. Certainly, it would probably relieve the monotony of doing what we're doing here. Maybe just change to a different chord now if you like. I'll stick with the G for simplicity. Let's try it one more time. One, two, three, four. Ready? One, two, three, four. Now keep playing and follow my instructions. One, two, three, four. Now what I'm going to get you to do is to just strum on beat one. So it's going to be one, two, three, four. One, two, three. Carry on. Hopefully you can anticipate where beat one comes in, because you're still counting. I'll join in with you. And so on. Again, if you're struggling at this point, further assistance is needed from someone who's um, able to guide you on this, on beat keeping. In the next step, we're going to chop our beats up into half. So where we've had one, two, three, four, for every beat we're going to do two strums. And a good musical way to count this is to put an and in between the numbers. So where we've been going one, two, three, four, we're going to count one and two and three and four and. And let's put an upstroke on those ands. In fact, if we look, we're moving up in between any hair, aren't we? We've got to come up before you go down. One and two and three and four and let's strum the way up. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So really our right hand isn't doing anything different than what it was doing at the start of the session. This is another way to keep good timing. Keep a regular movement with your hand. Even when you're not playing, just kind of Get in, get in the groove, keep going with the beat, lock onto that pulse. Let's add um, a hi-hat sound to our drums, which is gonna uh, mark out those half beats. Take a listen to this. So you can hear that ticking away, along with our click. So we could count one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. If that's a bit of a mouthful, just stick to the one, two, three, fours. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and you can hear those clicks in between. We're gonna try and strum down and up and down and up. Down on the numbers, up on the ands. So let's start by doing just down on the numbers, which is gonna be one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, and so on. Now let's put in our upstrokes on the ands and keep it going. So after four, one, two, Three, four, one and two and three. Keep it 
going one and two and three and four and and okay hold it there let's put our snare drum back in which is going to be on beats two and four so again if you get stuck go back to something similar in fact go right back to just strumming on beat one one two three four in fact let's start like that now so one two three four one two three four one two three keep counting look out and lock onto that beat one one two three Okay, now let's strum on every beat. One, two, three, four. Here we go. And count up to four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. That's good. Keep it going. Maybe a little accent on beat one to mark out the start of the bar. A stronger beat. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, now I'm going to put those upstrokes in on the and in between our numbers. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three. You carry on. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Keep it going. Two and three and four and one and two and three and four and Okay, if you can get to this point, you're in good stead to carry on and do some more advanced rhythms. You probably find a lot of rhythms though are actually based on that strumming. I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, I don't expect you to play this. This is a subject from another video, another lesson from, from a teacher. I'll strum on the first two beats and then I'll do down and up on the last two beats. So it's going to be like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, And it starts to sound a bit more song-like, certainly if I put some chord changes in there, um, that would be. These strumming patterns, by the way, they're available as, as another lesson. They're in one of the books. Uh, there's a sheet to go with this, and you'll be talked through and guided on that. So again, everything's down to the four beats. That's what we need to lock on. That's the backbone of music. We need to find that lock onto it before we go anywhere else. Probably the most important lesson in music, full stop, I think. You know, locking on, finding a beat, locking onto the beat. Um, certainly if you can't keep time or find the beats, you're going to find uh, you know, playing with accompaniment very difficult indeed. Let's give you a quick example. Um, I'll put a strumming pattern, still locking up my beat. See if you can count the one, two, three, fours throughout all my playing. I'll count you in. Here we go. So one, two, three, four. One, two. Managed to keep in time? Did you manage to keep your one, two, three, fours getting your head? Hopefully, you was perhaps tapping along, maybe rocking your head. Better still if you're kind of doing it without even uh, thinking about it. Or well, you'll think about it the next time you attempt this. Okay, that's all for this video. Any support you need with it, that will come from the teacher. You need the sheets to accompany this. Certainly, if you get any difficulties and um, you need some guidance or reassurance. I think it's always good to have reassurance that you're doing the right thing. Sometimes we're not aware of our, our little mistakes. This is where your teacher is going to support you. If you've got any questions, get in touch and um, we can help out there. Take care. Bye-bye.